Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Hello, and welcome to The Out of Being Human. We're dealing with drug addiction, and I will go through the various drugs and talk about them, but I want to start this session just with something that I heard about marijuana. I saw this morning or last night an interview that one of the senators of the United States had about marijuana and having so people could take it more often. So what she said was she wants to, d to deschedule marijuana. Now, I, I want to mention this because it's going to be an issue. In fact, it already is an issue. What does it mean to deschedule a drug? Well, years have gone into the planning of drugs and studying them and what they do, and every drug that has some kind of a, a likelihood that you could get adducted to it is put on a schedule. And I believe that the schedules run from one to five, and it's all based upon how easily it is is for you to get addicted to it. Some drugs never make it to market because they are so addictive that it would be too dangerous for people to use them. Others have a, have a pretty good life uh, in them so that they don't become so addictive so quickly. So I just want to mention that to you. The other thing to remember, there's lots of things to remember about addiction. Every drug has a kind of a time frame from the time you start using it to the time that you become addicted. Now, a lot of this has to do with your own biochemistry because your brain is in charge of so much, so that varies some. But there is an average length of time that people can take a drug before they become addicted. It could be three days, it could be four months, or whatever it is. Then every drug has a, a list of withdrawal symptoms. It's sometimes similar to other drugs, but sometimes it's different. So therefore, every drug has its own withdrawal symptoms, similar and different to other drugs. Every drug has a, has a time frame when you stop using it, how long it'll be before you get withdrawal symptoms. It might be an hour, it might be a week, it might be three minutes. You know, it's just different with each drug. So every drug has a time limit from the time you stop using it to the time that the withdrawal symptoms begin. And that's usually with Within hours, then every drug has a time period whereby the uh, the uh, addictive qualities kind of settle down, and your withdrawal symptoms kind of fade away. That can be a number of days, and it could be a number of weeks. But every drug is different. So the thing about dealing with drugs is so much similarity between them in terms of their addictive qualities, but there's so much difference between them too. And so what I'm going to have to do to get you prepared is to find out what drugs do what, when they do it, how long can you take it before addiction, how long will you be addicted, and a lot has to do with yourself. So each drug has its own individual characteristics. Human reaction times are different too. So you may be a person who gets addicted quickly. Other people may not get addicted so quickly. It's all a function of the time period that, that, that you have, that you experience the drugs. Drugs are not uh, something that you have to uh, that you have to deal lightly with. Drugs are dangerous. And even marijuana, she talked about marijuana quite a bit, but marijuana is not a safe drug. There are parts of marijuana that's really good in terms of uh, of handling pain and handling seizures, and it doesn't make you high. There are other parts of marijuana that people want to use recreationally that have a lot to do with getting too high. You could go too 
high in marijuana. It's not a hard drug such as opium would be. So therefore, she wants it. it she wants it changed, descheduled, so that it shows that. She said, "Let's make it like alcohol. You could get it when you want it. Now it's still dangerous as a drug if you get too high." I have students that I've worked with who have been on marijuana, and one of the students told me that you know when he drives and he's on the marijuana, he feels like he's floating down the street. He floats down the street and then he kind of guesses where he has to make turns and all of that. But he doesn't feel like he's stable on the ground. He feels like something's lifting him up and he's just kind of bouncing down the road. Well, if I'm doing the driving, I don't want to drive on a road in which somebody feels like they're floating down the road. I think that's dangerous driving. So there has to be some kind of regulation. But alcohol, you, they don't regulate, uh, regulate alcohol. If you want to buy alcohol, you drink it, and so therefore if maybe you get drunk, maybe you don't. It depends upon how much you drink. So we just have to be careful of these drugs. They are dangerous. Now, uh, we going back to uh, uh, smoking again. If you are breathing secondhand smoke, that's, then you are breathing in about 250 chemicals, which are basically poisonous. There are approximately, so I've read, 4,000 uh, substances in cigarettes. Now, I can't verify that, but that's what I've read. And I have a list of 13 of them, which I'm not going to read off to you, but I have a list of 13 of them, and some of them are poisonous, like arsenic and formaldehyde. So it's nothing to fool around with. On a, on a television show, I saw a, a, an elderly lady who had oxygen, and, and she had the, uh, on her nostrils, you know, she was wearing oxygen oxygen and uh, she can't go without it. It showed her they had all of the tanks of oxygen that she has lined up so she can breathe well. She said that every member of her family and her relatives have all died, and they've died because they smoked. And she said there was only one person that hasn't died outside of herself, and she said that person in her family never smoked. He's still alive. The rest of them are all dead. And now she decided, you know, it wasn't safe for her to get to smoke, but she started smoking anyway. So she says, I'm going to die like the rest of my family has died. I am smoking. She can barely breathe. She has to use oxygen to breathe. And she says, one day I'm going to wake up and my lungs are just not going to be working. I'm not going to be able to breathe. And then I will die. It's happened to every member of my family. And it's going to happen to me too. With the exception of that one person who didn't smoke. So smoking is dangerous. I've talked about Burgess disease and other diseases you can get. You can get cancer from smoking. It's just it's not anything that you want to do. There are about 71 million people that are smoking, and they're smoking at younger and younger ages. And one of the reasons they want to go to marijuana is they think that marijuana is a lot safer. Marijuana is not safe if you have too much of it. And just like smoking, you can get cancer from it, but you probably won't get cancer from marijuana. I'm not sure about that. But 71 million, 71.5 million people smoking every day at younger and younger ages. It's just terrible. Now, um, there are 13, uh, I have a list of 13. I'm not going to read them all off because I don't just believe in reading in lists, but I did mention, uh, I did mention arsenic, I did mention formaldehyde, but you get ammonia, nitrogen sulfide, you know, ben, uh, benzene, arsenic, all of these uh, substances in cigarettes. I don't know how they make them. They, the nicotine is the major, uh, major uh, substance in cigarettes, but there are other substances in there too. So uh, those uh, um, the harmful effects of smoking, it causes lung cancer in which 8% of the people and men and 4% of the women have due to smoking. It has bronchitis. 
emphysema, uh, mouth cancer, lip cancer, throat cancer, coronary heart disease, and that's a big one. Smoking really does do very big damage to your heart because it squeezes the blood vessels. It, it causes the blood, uh, the blood vessels to contract to the point where you can't get circulation through. That's what happens in Burgess disease. And finally, you become necrotic, gangrene can set in, and parts of your body can, ever fall, can even fall out. My twin sister, who was working as a nurse's aide in a nursing home, they had a lady, this was years ago, she lost half of her foot. It turned black, it fell off. Off. Now, there's a recent advertisement against smoking on television, which I kind of like. It says, uh, "Smoke a stroke is no is no fun. Smoking and getting a stroke from it is no fun." But I guess they forgot to tell you about the stroke part. You know, it's an advertising getting people to smoke for the, for, the fa for the fact of getting money from them. So smoking during pregnancy is bad, too, because the baby is less likely to live because of that. And the a mother is likely to get asthma and respiratory illnesses. And the secondhand smoke, as I said before, are, are, is bad because you're getting 250 uh, substances in your body that are basically poisonous. Now, your blood pressure is higher, um, and, uh, and, and it acts, does act like a tranquilizer. It causes the release of epinephrine, so it make you feel more relaxed. How many people do you know, they're nervous, and the thing they want to do first is get a hold of nicotine, to get a hold of smoking, and then when they smoke, they feel more relaxed. Well, nicotine does do that, but the carbon monoxide will go from your lungs to the bloodstream, and then it competes with what else is going on in the bloodstream. It's totally dangerous to smoke. If you want to do yourself a favor, uh, and do your lungs a favor, and do your heart a favor, what you're going to have to do is to sw stop smoking, because smoking is just too much. You can get COPD, that's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, from smoking, and your lungs just stop working right, because they've got all of that stuff in them, and it damages them so much. So smoking, if you can stop it, it will help your disability in shortness of breath, it will help you in not having so many muscle spasms, and, and uh, it will stop you having so much inflammation, which is the cause of a lot of illnesses, and you're going to need oxygen if you keep smoking. You're going to have to have more oxygen. So the benefits of, quicking, of, of quitting smoking has to do with blood pressure, heart function, lung function, and uh, the, the oxygen in the blood will become normal. You do have oxygen in your bloodstream and the circulation is better within two weeks to three months. And you will also have more energy, more respiration. You will have less sinus problems. You will have less breathing problems. You'll have less coughing. Now, it, it, so if you want to do yourself a favor, you just need to know that you can't use, do smoking and that it, it injures babies if you're pregnant. It injures you uh, it, just in terms of what it does to your circulation circulatory system. So uh, the use of, of nicotine doesn't actually give you symptoms, but you can have withdrawal. And what happens in withdrawal is you get craving, irritability, uh, you get frustrated, you get more anger, you have lack of concentration, you have slower heart rates, you have tremor, headache, insomnia. That's not all of it. But it's a good part of it if you have all of those things from smoking. And, you know, I remember in college, all of the girls, when they started smoking, they thought it was so cool getting out their cigarettes and all of that. And nobody ever told them how dangerous it was. Then it came out that smoking causes cancer, a lot of cancer, and then people started quitting. I don't know if smoking, I, there's a lot of people that still smoke because it's very hard to get off from it. It's one of those addictions that 
takes a long time to get off from it. And when you get the cravings and all the other symptoms I've mentioned, you're very tempted to continue because you don't want to have those symptoms. It will stop the symptoms if you smoke. But the thing is you have to keep smoking in order to stop the symptoms, and then you're doing a lot of dangerous things to yourself. And it actually starts to increase over several days, and by the end of a month, you're pretty well over it. There are other drugs that do it differently, that have a different time span. But it's important to know the time spans. If you're going to be using drugs, what are you faced with? I have taken people off from drugs, but what I've told them is, uh, I, I, one mother came to me, will you get my son off drugs? And I said, I'll try, but don't be surprised at what I say. And what I said to this boy was, I can't stop you from smoking if you want to do it. It's totally your decision. But before you make that decision, Listen to what it does to your body, and then at least you're making the decision, having full information, not guessing what's going to happen next, or not assuming nothing is going to happen next. So I got my textbooks out, I got diagrams, I got pictures, I got all my medical information out, and talked to him for a good half hour or so and found out that he decided he did not want to do smoking anymore. He just got off from it. And it's difficult to do that cold turkey, but he got off from it because he didn't want to take a chance of what he would become and how ill he would become if he continued. So uh, this will close off what I'm going to say about smoking, and we'll go into something else in terms of drug addiction next time. Thank you for watching.